I want to think a little bit more broadly around issues of collaboration for value creation, right, what we think about in terms of ecosystems. And Mary has a unique perspective for us in that she's had the opportunity to live in two very different worlds, coming from the IT server world, which in some ways was born in the land of collaboration and ecosystems, and has been transplanted into the mobile world, which is being pulled and or pushed into this world. Um, and so where I'd, where I'd like to start is trying to get your perspective on, so what are the differences? Not, not in terms of the technologies, but in terms of the, the challenges that participants in this sector face. Yeah, I think uh, the case of Nokia is one where um, if your dreams get answered, sometimes they don't always get answered in the way you wish. So we've had this vision for a long time of the inherent capabilities of mobile, what the device can do. But we come from the telecom world, which is extraordinarily different from the IT world in that um, success historically has been about managing your suppliers, driving efficiency and scale, and very orderly and I would say almost gentlemanly relationships with the mobile operators. All of the technology standards and the process for setting those, they're sort of very well documented and adhered to processes for how uh, these things work. And you know, sort of things moved on in the 80s and 90s, early part of uh, this decade uh, to get that done. Uh, so now we have the uh, longed for convergence and you know, it's maybe a little bit more painful uh, than, than we would have liked. Um, because you come from this internet world where you don't have these gentlemanly processes. There are no du jour standards. It's all, let's invent something, throw it against the wall, and if it sticks, that is now the standard. And by the way, I own the IP, and, if, and you're going to have to pay a, a big tax if you want to get in, if I choose to let you in at all. And so, uh, you know, um, the perspective at Nokia, at least coming in, and I think of telecom companies in general, was more of this vertical orientation, kind of control and manage things, and this idea that you can't control and manage things, and some things can't always be predicted, has made life uh, a bit more challenging. I think it's somewhat more exciting, because I think it's opened things up to innovation that we've seen historically in the, the software and IT worlds, uh, but not as predictable in terms of the ability to manage. Um, you know, I was saying earlier, when, when I joined Nokia, the, the idea of having a partner who wasn't a supplier was very foreign. In fact, uh, somebody in legal decided we weren't even allowed to use the word partner uh, because that might imply some relationship. And so the preferred term was collaborator. You can imagine the negative connotations of that word. And all of the uh, information internally was about uh, protecting yourselves. You know, if you choose to take the risk of engaging with another party, make sure you protect yourselves in these ways. And it's really taken a number of years and a number of uh, proof points of successful relationships to demonstrate that you know, we need to break out of the shell uh, and we need to create uh, some alliances with others. Uh, in order to, to create value and participate in what is going beyond the traditional telecom world to now this broader uh, mobile ecosystem. So what does that mean for your strategy? It is how you prioritize your resource allocation when you move in this direction. Yeah, you know, um, I think it's understanding where uh, we believe our strengths are, which, you know, clearly in uh, developing great devices and increasingly in services. Um, and the idea here is, you know, just as we forward integrated GPS and camera and other capabilities in the device. You know, they're not just for phone calls anymore. Um, you need to have some of the service functionality as a core piece of what the device offers. Location services, uh, access to social networks, consumption of music. You know, that's not extra. That's what people expect to be in their device, and we need to be able to deliver that and integrate that ourselves. So that's caused us um, to A, strike some partnering deals, and then also to do pretty extensive M&A uh, to bring in some of these core capabilities. Given the storefront, given the commercialization support, how do, you, how do you now look at the position with Apple and their app store, which as we all know, by the way, came about against Steve Jobs' will rather than as part of the initial strategy. Um, how, do you, how do you think about competing on the service front? Yeah, so some of it is about being hyper-local. So for example, uh, the number of languages that we support with the OV Store are far greater than any of our competitor. So in about 80% of the countries we serve, you can have that experience in your native language. 
uh, we support operator billing to purchase apps because outside the U.S. credit card purchases are not as prevalent. Uh, so it's looking for models that exist outside the U.S. and trying to exploit those as a means of building um, you know, greater volume and opportunity for developers. And then, you know, we have a great presence in, in India, as many of you know, close to 70% market share. We've also done some innovative programs in California with the, the large Asian developer communities. You know, why don't you develop apps for people back home? And we can give you access to those markets as you sit here in California. Mm -hmm. So, you know, trying to, to look for the chinks in the armor, if you will. Contrast two different markets for me, whether it's part of the European market, the U.S. market, something developed versus something emerging. And tell me about the difference in the challenges that you face in bringing the parties together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so our focus is on emerging markets for mobile commerce, at least initially. Okay. Uh, focus on the, uh, what we're calling the underbanked, leveraging the fact that there are far more, mo far more mobile phones in the world than there are bank accounts, particularly in these markets. And so you end up with these all cash economies that aren't particularly secure or convenient for the participants. Uh, a question I often get asked is, you know, maybe the reason they don't have bank accounts is because they don't have money, uh, which is absolutely not true. You know, these are people with jobs who just don't have access to basic financial services. And, you know, sort of classic uh, strategic planning in a big company, where can we expand beyond our core? What assets do we have? Well, one of the big assets that we have in these countries is distribution. So what we are trying to prove out to ourselves, and this is why we're in pilot phase, is can a Nokia retailer act as an agent for cash in and cash out of mobile services? Because if that works, you've now made banking possible in communities where it was impossible in the past.